Hey, this is Jimbo, Casio's co-host on Rocket 95.1. Go back to episode 22 if you're interested at all about what went down on Hank Williams Jr.'s tour bus the night we snorted whiskey. Yeah, that was an interesting time. I forgot about that, actually, until the dude reminded me of it. We snorted whiskey. Hey, if you can't get enough Casio, check him out at his real job. Yeah, the one that actually pays the bills. Listen to the Jimbo and Casio Morning Show live 6 to 10 a.m. Central on therocket951.com. Dateline Italy. A woman, a hairstylist specifically, has customized her Fiat with 264 pounds of human hair. Oh, gross. Yeah. She got the hair from India before spending 150 hours placing it on her car. She told a TV station in in, uh, Italy, my inspiration came from a dare, a bet while I was working. My friend didn't think I was capable of making a car that was entirely covered in real hair. When he saw it, my finished work of art, he was completely shocked by what I'd made. It it looks disgusting. uh, Oh, even this is a little more alarming. They shampoo it, Mm. brush it, and trim it. Chances... That she has lampshades made out of human skin at home. <laughs> They're high. Listen live online or download the Rocket app for your tablet or smartphone. Just search WRTT Rocket 95.1 in the Apple or Google Play Store. What's up, Candy Lickers? Pleased to meet you. Nice to know me. What you doing besides washing your hands? You're listening to another edition of Casio's Cut. everybody for tuning in hope you are enjoying yourself on self-isolation as we all continue to dodge the coronavirus we are corona free and way to be here at casio's cut podcast we hope you are too and we know you're catching up on all your streaming services and hopefully you listen to all the casio's cut time to catch up if you are a new listener Go back and listen to those archives during the week while you are social distancing from all your friends and family. For those of you who are still working, just want to thank you guys and gals who are helping this country run on a skeleton crew. Basically, we uh, it goes without saying that we need you more than ever. All of our first responders, healthcare workers, and yes, even the people that are still getting us food, grocery stores, restaurants, the whole nine. So I just want to say personally, thank you for taking care of us. As it's been said many times, we now have a new normal here with the coronavirus and everything that's going down. And we are joined by my buddy today, who is anything but normal himself, and that is comedian Stephen Spinola. You guys are going to love learning about his ups and downs as a comedian coming from New York. But first, a little bit of housekeeping. Be sure you follow us on social media. My personal account is at the Casio Kid. Be sure you follow that. Then follow the show account, of course, at Casio's Cut. C-A-S-I-O-S-C-U-T. That's Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. All Casio's Cut. You can find us there. Be sure you subscribe. Be Be sure you like. Be sure you retweet. Be sure you repost. And share all that good stuff and make sure you go over to our YouTube channel and subscribe there as well. Luckily for you and me, we had an assortment of packages delivered to the P.O. box before all the coronavirus hit. So I think we're all safe. I've let it sit there. I've Lysoled it. And next week we will have a P.O. box episode for you. And then coming up in two weeks, we'll have my good friend Corey Ryan Forster, who you may have heard. On the first episode, the Liberal Rednecks, he was a part of that, of course. But now he is solo, and we had a blast recording Countdown with Corey Ryan Forrester. Be sure to check that out in two episodes. Now let's go backstage at Stand Up Live Comedy Club in Huntsville. In between shows, I had a chance to sit down 
with the owner of the domain certified pre-owned flying cars.com what's that what, what, get, what are we getting when we go there you're getting video of me doing stand-up. You get a video of me singing songs. You get a video of me acting in an award-winning film from 2013. The award was for editing, not for acting. <laughs> and then you can see all my show dates. If you click on, who's this guy? I think it says that. It says something like that. Who? <laughs> and then you and then you, you find out about what is me. It? You find out my biography, my biology. Then you go to, uh, what? What? Are you go to no? I don't know what it says. I forget what it says on there. What does it say? It's your own website. It's like who, what, when, where, why, something like that, right? What is why it? does it have uh, stand up, musical comedy, right? Acting. I told you the three yep. things. Upcoming shows. There you go. Who? Media. See, I, literally, I nailed it booking. up until media. So then, if you click on media, you could find like uh, a couple links to some of my old work. I mean, this is 10 years of work you're looking at. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Then you go to booking. You can click on that. It'll take you to a thing that opens your email browser. Is it called a browser when you do email? I'm going to go app. Probably your opens an app. app and Wait, then I'm you can click email it. me directly. It acts like, oh, you're, you're emailing the website. You might be emailing a manager of some sort. I don't have a manager. I manage my own shit. Booking at stevenspinola.com. That's right, baby. And it just goes to my email, which is spinola.steven at gmail.com. <laughs> if, you email, if, you, if you're listening to this podcast, I'll let you you're in You're supposed to say, like, this is Mary in his office. You're yeah. supposed to make a fake email. Yeah, it's Steven Spinola in his kitchen. <laughs> Literally begging for spots. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Literally taking anything that comes yeah. in that email inbox. So what is this? What are we doing here? <laughs> Your tone is so aggressive. Everyone You're clearly keeps, not from the South. Yeah, everyone keeps telling me that, but I feel like I'm the nice guy. You get a guy like Connor Larson, you heard of this guy? I mean, he's just mean <laughs> through and through. I mean, he's passive aggressive. You ever heard okay. of that? You ever heard of passive aggression? He's just passive, I think. That, that's when you're gay, but you're mean. <laughs> passive aggressive? I don't know why I said that. I'm just being so silly. <laughs> I'm very, you know, I'm honestly drunk and high, and I apologize if I say anything that's like, get you canceled. That's all I care about. I don't want you. You've already canceled. survived that. That's why well, I, I wanted know, to bring up. Get, listen, I can't get canceled. I'm saying if I get you canceled, I feel bad. That's all I'm saying. Why do I get canceled if you say something? Is that how it works now? Sometimes, yeah. I think that's oh, no, no, no. Don't do that. Like, if, like, don't like do you that. know how, like, if I say the N word and you agree with me, like you know, what I mean? or if I giggle, yeah, if you giggle, cause yeah. like, well, give me a heads up if you're about to say it. I mean, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if I laugh at that, I you just, just laugh got at you joking dude, about you it. You just got canceled. That was you it. Didn't even realize me. That's how quick it happens. Okay, okay, uh, but I do want to talk about because you went through. This was kind of bef- pre-cancel culture. Right. I remember no, you I lost was, a bunch of followers. Yeah, no, I was the first fake news okay so j- tell everybody what happened when yeah back when like people started saying that term fake news they're like oh everything's fake news uh trump was getting elected and or he had just gotten elected and they were in between the election and the inauguration is when all this stuff was going on people were like what's gonna happen trump's about to get into office everyone on the right is talking about fake news everyone on the left is talking about like Shh, this is gonna be a disaster <laughs> and i'm sitting there not political at all have never voted I was just on Twitter being like, I like having a lot of followers, so I tweet whatever the hashtags are. I was right. tweeting whatever's trending. So the inauguration was on, I believe, January 20th of 2017. And I remember sitting in my living room just tweeting about everything, just tweeting about everybody I saw on the TV. I tweeted about Hillary. I tweeted about Trump. I tweeted about Obama. I th- and then I said, I said, Baron Trump looks like a very handsome date rapist to be. And something about that made people lose their absolute fucking minds. I mean, everyone was saying that I was a rapist for saying that. There was a whole, like, change.org petition to have me fired from Comedy Central that over 300,000 people signed. For a tweet. For a tweet. And I didn't even work for Comedy Central, so I, I remember... <laughs> what I, I, I tweeted it being like, all right, I resign. You know, <laughs> but, you guys won again. But the thing was, like, Comedy Central was using my tweets, and they were sending me release forms to use my tweets for free. 
And then they would send me like a pack of cards or like a fucking sweatshirt to make me feel better, you know? And, and they like wouldn't. And I remember I would ask them, I'd be like, hey, can I like work somewhere in Comedy Central? Can I do right. anything for Comedy Central? Can I get on a show? Can I submit a packet to write for you guys? And the lady told me, like, I work for a marketing company that works for Comedy Central. So oh, we're just hiring God. people through Twitter to use their jokes. Basically, they were using all of our jokes. The writers for the show weren't writing a goddamn thing. They were just, like, Jesus. taking all these Twitter personalities' jokes. And they hit me up because I had a big following and because I was doing At Midnight a bunch. Mm-hmm. So, like, I uh, people in Comedy Central kind of knew who I was. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of weird how, like... They turned their back on me so hard when that happened because Trump supporters were saying that they were going to boycott Comedy Central because of me. And then Comedy Central, they came out with a press release saying that I didn't work for them and that I never worked for them in in any capacity. And I came back at oh. them being like, hey, guys, because like you, I have the press, I have the release forms. <laughs> You've got signatures yeah, going on. I've got on. signatures. I've got release forms with your fucking company name and shit and like whatever sketches you were using them in, the lines that you were using in those sketches that were my tweets. And um, yeah, like nobody really cared. People didn't fucking have my back. Like comedians obviously didn't have my back. There was a few. I'll shout out Billy Anderson if anybody knows who that is. Evan Jones, obviously my roommate at the time. There's only a few people that like had my back. Well, um, did they did when you say that did comics just not address it or yeah. or were they yeah. didn't go against you? They, they just they didn't even hands go, off. No, they didn't go against it, but they were just hands off. Yeah. They wouldn't like but then there was a thing like this last year, this girl Dina Hashem, who I used to do open mics with in New York, she she's been getting on uh, the comedy cellar a bunch and whatever. And I guess there was like a thing that she said about some rapper where all these rap fans were sending her death threats and she asked Comedy Central or she asked her management to ask Comedy Central to not air the clip because okay. she didn't want to get any more death threats. She like closed her social media down and everything. And then all these comics came out being like, fuck Comedy Central. Like all these big comics. So essentially the same thing. But like, but like coming out against Comedy right. Central for her. Yeah, but like she didn't. They didn't even actually do anything to her. And she th- asked him to pull the clip. Yeah, it's so weird. So it's just weird how certain people get, you know. And I'm not mad. I'm glad that people came to her defense. I just wish people came to mine. Right. You know what I mean? So it was this weird thing where I'm like this white guy, and people are like, eh, "Is it really worth it to go to bat for him?" And also, people are like, "He can handle it because he's a guy." You know, there's this, there's a lot of weird so psychological dynamics that go along with it. And so I was just like, honestly, not willing to live in New York. In that, like, I got doxxed. You know, people knew where I lived. Jeez. Yeah. So they were like sending people were calling and texting me and shit and being like, "I know where you live," and like sending me personal information and stuff, sending me my family members' names and things, family members' addresses, stuff like that. Being like complete strangers, just yeah. messing you out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. With personal info. Yeah. This was supposed to be a funny podcast. Sorry. No. <laughs> We got plenty of time. That's, for that. what, that's what happens, you know. People get crazy, you know. They they believe in something so much, and it's so wild that they would get behind like a fucking political candidate. You know what I mean? That's what makes them go so nuts. Well, especially when you were you're making jokes about everybody. Well, people well, just see the one tweet well, the and one go. Thing, but here's the thing: is that it wasn't just that they saw the one thing. The reason they saw the one thing is because Alex Jones, you know, yeah, Infowars. Yes. I was on the front page of Infowars, so it was all these conspiracy theorists. They were oh. going fucking absolutely crazy saying that I was under some liberal agenda. And I was Jeez. like, I don't even vote. Uh, my <laughs> parents are friends with Trump. My, my mom and my stepdad went to lunch with Trump, like, at the same table as him. Like, their friend, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, my family is, like, huge Republicans. So it was, like, very strange that I was getting this just because of that. But people don't look into anything. And then I spent about a month... On Facebook and not really Twitter, I kind of closed down my Twitter a little bit. I didn't block it, but I like just stopped looking at it. But my Instagram and Facebook, I would answer every single hate mail that I got, and I would try to turn people around because it's mostly Christians, right? Do you kill them with kindness, or were you oh, yeah. popping back off? Yeah, no, no, kill them with kindness because I'm Christian. You know what I'm saying? So like, I know how to talk to these people. So I was like, you know, if you really believe in God, you wouldn't be talking to another person like this, especially a random person. Who like has a family and go and you know that goes yeah. to church and stuff. It's just so crazy. So people um, really kind of like a lot of them would say they were sorry and that they realized that they were just getting crazy, and so that was nice. Did but. you? Uh, so you said you sh- you quit paying attention to Twitter. Did do you think you started censoring yourself? 
at oh, all? Oh yeah, yeah. For I mean, between now and then, I've lost about thirteen, no, about fifteen thousand followers, and it's mostly because I'm crazy now. It's hard for <laughs> like <laughs> it's hard for me to like just tweet jokes. Like I constantly am like pl- politics drives me insane, and like the fact that poor people are being you know I used to have money back then. And then, like, I kind of lost a lot of money right before Trump got elected. And then, like, I bought a house down here. And then now I have no liquid cash. You're in Nashville. Everybody said, no, you're in Nashville. Yeah, I'm in Nashville. So now I'm a stand-up comedian in Nashville making stand-up comedians wage. I used to trade stocks. You know, so I used to make, That's a big difference. Yeah, huge difference in income. So now I know what it's like to be a poor person. So I'm like, it's hard for me to, like, even believe the thoughts that I believed before I was poor. And so now that I know what poor people go through and I understand the politics that are going on and like how people are systematically being kept down, it kind of just like, especially knowing my old thought process, like as a person who had money, like the way that I used to think, knowing how people who have money think now, you know, they're evil and they don't care about poor people. So it's hard for me to make jokes now when I'm thinking that. And so when I'm not on stage, that's all I'm thinking about. So that was just maybe the whole time, not just that one incident, but the whole time kind of changed your whole dude. Three years approach just, it. Yeah, social media. Three years of just feeling defeated, you know. And it's do, hard do to you, like. Do you ever start it. believing in it? The what negativity. You, yeah, of course. Because really. like, I, like I'm like, am I good? I'm like, am I any good? Yeah, yeah. Am I like, funny? Am I actually you on know? the radio show that I'm on in Huntsville? Uh, they had a the morning show before we got there were huge. Yeah, and when they fired him. The next day they put, which is now my co-host, I wasn't there. They didn't fire him for him, but they just fired him and said, we got to throw this guy on because he was already in the building. And so the people took it out on him instead of, it wasn't, he, it wasn't him that fired him, but they were like, you're the worst show ever. What are you even doing? You know, you need to go die. Like, I'm sure you got, and he was like, dude, it started. It gets to you. You start believing in, like, maybe maybe I am. So, what am I doing on this show? Well, I mean, dude, before, I mean, especially in that month, I remember I was like in a panic. You could hear me on Legion of Skanks podcast. You could hear me just in a panic, just feeling like I'm going to die and having like three professionals. That was in that time period? It was the day it it was Oh, the day it was happening. Yeah. I remember I messaged Louis J. Gomez and he was nice enough to let me be on the podcast. And the whole time they just made fun of me. They were like, they didn't think it was serious at all. And I was like, yeah, guys, you don't understand. Like, this is my career is going to be, like, totally. I had a good projection for my I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> you understand? I wouldn't know you right now. Right. Seriously. You wouldn't have ever came south. No, you no, know the dude, whole thing. I, before I moved here, I was fucking semifinalist in the Laughing Skull. I was doing shit with JFL. I was doing all types of stuff. And then now my career has been completely, like, like stunted. Like, so it, it, it's worse than people realize. People don't realize what shit like that does to you. Well, I remember the first time I ever uh, met you and talked to you about it. Um, uh, you were at Zany's. I had never met you before, but somehow we ended up talking. I think I looked at your uh, Twitter, and you were, I was like, this fucking guy's got a shit ton of followers. And I mentioned it to you, and you, you brought up the story, and we started talking about it. I'm like, that's an insane story. Yeah. That is, in a three-year, like, even me then, I... I in my head, it's like, oh, everybody gets mad at a tweet, you lose the followers, and it's over with. And, and like, you laying it all out like that is like, well, this is a, there's before and after that tweet in your life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that, like that's a, a, that's a defining a moment. It's yeah, like a that's BC a de- and AD for me. Dude. Yeah, before that's and after the like. tweet. No, I'm telling you, that's literally what it is. It's like my life was chill before that tweet. I mean, it wasn't that chill. I, I lost a lot of money in the stock market. I was in a serious mental decline anyway. So it's kind of a perfect storm for it to all happen like that. You know, you lose you lose all the money, you lose the person that you love. <laughs> Just all the things. You now know? you're here on a couch with but me. But the thing was in that You're time, on a casting couch with but me. But in that time I had an uh, I had, you know, my wife now, we were together and she stayed with me through all of that and then I said to her I said you want you know, nobody's got my back here in New York. I said I have the money. I'll buy a house. I said you want to just go down and live in tennessee we'll just get out of here did you know people in nashville my cousin lived in clarksville that was it you were just like let's do nashville and i was like let's go let's go down there because honestly i'd been traveling a lot doing comedy in the years before you know i knew dusty slay and he had had me on his shows here and uh we were good friends back then when i you know was first moving here so 
it was it was nice to have people that were really welcoming in Nashville. It's a very welcoming scene. I don't know how it is now. I don't, you know, the, the the open micers aren't so nice now. But back when I was coming through, they were all like really nice, very people supportive. Who were very supportive, put you on shows all the time, and so yeah, it was like, why wouldn't I go to a place like that? And, I, and now, I, you know, I'm making more money doing comedy and selling these pipes after my shows <laughs> than you know I ever made doing comedy. So, in New York. so to tell everybody uh, that hasn't seen you yet. A lot of comedians sell different things after shows, CDs, DVDs, T-shirts, any kind of merch, posters. Uh, the guy that's here uh, tonight is selling USBs. You. Yeah. Not only do you sell pipes. Right. I make Christmas you ornaments. You make the pipes. I make Christmas ornaments. I make pipes. I make pickles, legitimate pickles and glass pickles that you can smoke out of. Folks, literally... The time before this time, you had jars of pickles. I wasn't ready. You were like on stage, so I'm selling pickles afterwards. Yeah, hot sauces. You literally peppers. had pickles. Yeah. Pickles. Wait, how do you get into glass blowing? Well, that's a funny story. Is right at, as that was happening, all that death threat stuff. Yeah. I had at that time, I was still trading stocks, so I had some pretty good money. So I like ordered a bong of my head. My my Twitter profile picture. There's a lady named. Um, now the name's uh, Tammy Baller, and she's like a famous glass blower. And I commissioned her to make my head out of glass. And so she lived up in Albany, it was about three hours from where I lived. I was like, I want to get out of New York City right now because people want me dead and know where I live. So I was right. like, I'm going to come up to you, to your glass studio, and I'll pick up the bong that you made of my head. So when I went to go get it, she was like, she was showing me all the stuff she was doing. It's got like a a kiln going and like a big torch going she had another person working in her shop and she was like you interested in this stuff and i was like yeah i'm a huge glass collector and like i would love to learn about glass blowing wow and she was like well i know someone who lives right near you who can teach you for you know you, you pay him for a class and he'll teach you how to do it and uh and, and his name's B Money, and he's my glass teacher. He's my sensei, and I've been hanging out with him since. I know a lot of B Money's. None of them are glass teachers. Oh, B Money. Check his glass out, dude. He's got some sick Where can glass. they find Just Google. Instagram. Instagram is where you find all the glass. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Instagram That's the is... glass culture on Instagram. Instagram. a bunch of glass blowers, dude. They're all... That's... Dude, you wouldn't believe how much money gets fucking made in glass blowing. Any drug dealer, they can't put their money in, like, a bank because they don't want the IRS to find that shit. They're like... They call it trap trophies. And they buy, like, $10,000 bungs. Trap yeah, dude. trophies? Dude, I have a $5,000 piece. What is it? It's a Hasidic Jew. That has you take his hat, he's like a top hat on. You take it off, <laughs> and you smoke out of his yarmulke, and he's got curls and everything. And he's holding a he's holding a, a a Pabst blue ribbon, and he's taking a selfie. How cool is that? I really need one of my listeners to be the one that buys the acidic Jew bomb. Dude, it's cool. I mean, and, and there's a whole culture with glass. I can get into that. I could talk for an hour about that. I mean, there's parties where you go where there's like a million dollars worth of glass on the table, and like you can't get in unless you have an expensive piece of glass. It's like kind of cool. That's called a meth lab down here. No, no you no, have no, like no, no, serious no. glass pieces. Yeah, these are like expensive pieces of art. You know what I mean? Like you could take these on a plane because you wouldn't even be able to tell these are bongs. Well, to, like, just tonight, tonight, what but what different glass pipes do you have? You have a pickle. Well, I have the pickle. I have dare pipes. I have the dare logo <laughs> on them. I got Bernie and Trump pipes. Feel the burn. Palita pipes. I got the... Make America Smoke Again. I got the NASA pipes for these Huntsville the nerds. Huntsville. These fucking nerds. <laughs> I got some Star Wars pipes for the Sith and for the huh. good side. What are you, Sith or are you good side? What are you, bro? Me? Yeah. <laughs> are you Sith? <laughs> He's Andrew no, dude, You're not Sith. You're good side, dude. I would be Jabba. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you gotta be careful because the Sith, they smoke meth, they have unprotected Seth. That's why Darth Vader looks like he has space aids. You know what I'm saying? Those are STDs? Yeah, it's STDs, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get into the countdown here. We ready? And can I just apologize to for the what? listeners for this sad ass episode? You made me talk it's about not, sad this is shit. Super, this is way interesting. Uh, I hope people are interested in not sad as fuck trying to kill themselves right now. They've sat through a Connor Larson episode to get. Well, to I you. mean, that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. They probably got the noose ready when Connor was up, and they're listening <laughs> to me, and they're like, "I'm going to end it at all." 
<laughs> okay, 10. Name something that's a perfect 10 in your life. Perfect 10, my wife's tits. <laughs> Perfect areolas, perfect size. I make sure she straps them up so they don't get saggy. You know what I'm saying? Straps them up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're so much better when they're flopping to the side. <laughs> no, Dorfman wants them flopping <laughs> to the side. <laughs> the back man. It's the best, man. You like to just see some Wait, nipple popping out the armpits. What's you know what I'm saying? You know they're, you know they're real. And you know it's a real woman. That's all I got. You know it's a real woman. Yeah. I hope you guys can pick that up. That's good stuff. <laughs> what? And I got, I got a question. What's up now? What's you announced? She has perfect areolas. Oh, perfect. What is that to you? Pepperoni? You got the high and tight? What are we going? I mean, depends what type of pepperoni. Are you Italian? <laughs> You Italian? We got a couple types, baby. It's not a big pepper. It's not a pizza pepperoni. You know what I mean? It's a nice cheese and wine pep. You so your wife's saying? tits. That's the first time we've had that. Really? That, yeah. We've had the generic my wife. Oh, no, dude. My you wife, went specific tits. My wife in general. But her tits, let me tell you, baby. <laughs> I'm telling you, perfect puss, perfect ass, all that stuff. Let me tell you. Yeah, what's up? What makes a perfect puss? Oh, bro. Huh? It flaps to the side. You can see it. She's like a real woman. <laughs> it sounds like you're perfect just tits. You're back perfect fat. Tits, but it's just in the bottom side. You know what I mean? How are you married? I honestly have no idea. I ask that to her every day. I ask her why she doesn't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got the perfect nine is the German word for no. So what's, what's something no in 2020? Mayonnaise. <laughs> what? No mayonnaise. You hate mayonnaise? And no aiolis either. Get it out of here. Aioli. It's just mayonnaise it's in fancy, disguise. It's a fancy mayonnaise. Well, they can't hear us out there. We got to go quick. I'm about to go on stage. Oh, are you are about eight. What's the last thing you ate? Last thing I ate was a steak, baby. You did eat a steak. <laughs> My wife's puss. God damn it. If I was any good at comedy, I would have said that. All right. What do we got? Seven. seven. What's something that's seven inches long? My wife's puss. There we go. That's how we do it, baby. There we six, go. Six things you can't travel without. Six things I can't travel without is some type of weed, like wax, weed, something. Uh, my car. I hate flying. Gotta have my car. If I'm fly, I'll fly in my car, certified pre-owned flying car. Uh, what else we got? Andrew Dorfman's email address. <laughs> I just keep that in my pocket. That gets you in clubs. That just helps me. It just makes me feel better about the fact that every other club is closing. No pills, no medications, no pillows. No, I don't take any of that stuff. I, uh, I'm i trying to think what else. You ready? Like, yeah, five. Five. What's the last thing you stole? Five finger discount. I don't steal. I would never steal anything. That was very serious. Four. Mount Rushmore. I, little Debbie. I don't even want to joke. Don't even joke about it. Delete that from this podcast. I, okay, I don't even talk about steal. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Four, right. Mount Rushmore, Little Debbie's. Top four. Uh, it's Pecan Pinwheel. Pecan Swirls, yeah. Uh, we got Honey honey, uh, honey, buns. honey Bun. Okay. Zebra Cakes, Nutty Buddies. It's a strong four right there. Very Connor easy. Larson's never had yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Three, three albums on a deserted island. Bill Cosby, the one uh, where he talks about his brother. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, Comedy album. That's a solid Well, that's call. a good one because you get two things out of it. You get the comedy, but then you also get to laugh about how he's in jail for raping everybody. That's funny. It's heck. So you um, listen to all the jokes in a different way. Yeah. Then I do Michael Jackson, I'm bad. Absolutely. Okay. And then I'm going to do OK Go, uh, the color of the blue color of the sky. All right. Two, you're a wrestler. Who's your tag team partner? Scotty Too Hottie. Easy. Oh, that's a strong. Easy. Doing the worm? You kidding me, dude? Because I can't. I need him. One, dude. most famous person in your phone. Most famous person in my phone right now? Shoot, who's the most famous person in my phone? It's probably Dusty Slay, but it's uh, probably. Oh, no, actually, um, Ari, uh, the guy who does Blake Weber. Ari Spears? No, not Ari Spears. It, it, uh, Aristotle or something. No, he does Blake Weber. It's a character on Instagram. He's got like over a million followers. All right, we'll look at it. Spinoli going on stage. Adios, muchachos. Thank you for having me, guys. Peace out. Peace out.